come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where the ticket gets you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. Uh, oh, movie or a oh, no. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. It wasn't the same, but you only need the edge. <laughs> yeah. Always wanted to use it. Kids, get it free. That was probably an inappropriate movie to start with that. Uh, $12 uh, beers. <laughs> Uh, if you're listening to us on iHeartRadio, we want to welcome you aboard. Oh, welcome. First house members get a wife beater. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can also hear us on uh, iTunes, TuneIn, Google Play, Stitcher Radio. Hey, if you have an Amazon Alexa-enabled device, you can just say, Alexa, play a Saturday say Night Freak Show <laughs> on <laughs> TuneIn, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll trigger it, and you can hear us right there. Um, can we to tell her to... Listen. Don't do it. No, I mean, you're like, Alexa, play Saturday Night Freak Show. Will she do it? Yeah. On iTunes. Or on, on TuneIn. Okay. I think it's the whole thing. Hey, whatever. As long as she does it. Yep. Um, so we're a movie review podcast. We come at you every Saturday night. You can also catch us Unless on... Unless guard, then we don't uh, understand. That's right. <laughs> what, well, <laughs> what about this movie? Yet. We're going to find out. Uh, you can also write to us, and we hope that you do. Subscribe on... Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Maybe via email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. And you probably want to know who these wonderful people are talking to you. They Holly, are the internet Holly, radio yeah, superstars. Sorry, start with- you had a long pause there. I was like, <laughs> are you just jumping in? Holly. <laughs> Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Michaela. What did we watch tonight? We watched The Baba Duck. From 2014. Duke. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I always have to think about it, because I want to say Baba Duke all the time. And that's Baba not Duke? Right. Yeah. Baba yeah. Duke. It's, it's Book yeah. Duke. Yeah. Baba Duke. Yeah. Book Baba Duke, Duke look as they rhyme. Yeah. 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 Well, they're Australians, so that's yeah. why they'd say that. We can still say Baba Duke, right? They also say no. Baba Duke. They say Baba, Baba Duke. Duke. Yeah. Yeah. They, it's completely backwards from how we would say yeah. it, basically. Duke. Okay. Well, who uh, who directed this film? Je- it was written and directed by Jennifer Kent. It is female uh, filmmaker appreciation something? M- Women in Horror Month. Women in Horror Month. Yes. Yeah. That's something. You had the right sentiment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was Women there. Yes. Month. We'll take it. Mm-hmm. Um, so this was a uh, uh, film festival, darling, right? Mm-hmm. That uh, Was it Sundance? Sundance loved it. TIFF loved it. This was one of the first we were talking about. This was like part of a uh, like a group of movies where it seemed like every year out of Sundance, there was a film that uh, a horror film that, all you know, mm-hmm. built up like a head of steam as far as like yeah. critical acclaim. And then you had to wait, you know, mm-hmm. the greatest horror movie ever. ever made. <laughs> yeah. It, if anything, this was like the first car in the hyperbole train. Uh-huh. You know, it was this and then it was yeah. it follows and then it was the witch and then it was it comes at night. And this year it's hereditary and yeah. who knows where it's going to go from there. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, this was like the first one in that hyperbole train. This one I remember. Mm hmm. These movies always seem to, maybe we can talk about this, I don't know if you want to talk about this now or later, but they seem to come with a, uh, you know, the hype that's built up is seldomly, it seems like anyway, in the mainstream audience delivered. Mm -hmm. And so then there's this backlash that ultimately follows on with these movies. Like the the critics love them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're usually, I mean, I think all three of, all four of those films that you might, well, five, right? Yeah. Hereditary also is getting very good notices. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we don't know what's going to happen there. But, I mean, there's a lot of articles now about, like, okay, temper Calm your expectations. Yeah, yeah, because everybody is like, it's going to be the greatest horror movie ever. Then they go into it with a set of expectations. And, uh, I mean, the reason why these critics like these movies is because they defy those expectations. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and we had talked about it off mic. Uh, Colin, you brought up a good point about like the reason why critics love these movies so much is that they're watching film festivals of like hours and hours and hours of movies that are probably hard dramas with really slow pace and not a lot of action. So they watch something that's slightly different and it is the most mind blowing thing because it's different than everything else they've watched. Mm-hmm. So they're watching these movies in a completely different environment than anybody else is going to watch them mm-hmm. in. So. Right. That sets unrealistic expectations, too. That's well, I think true. also there's like a thing, uh, and I don't know if this is just systemic to the horror uh, audience or genre, but it seems like, you know, modern horror uh, movies that are put out by Hollywood, you look at everything, you know, that you can think of in the modern uh, It, The Conjuring, uh, Annabelle, I mean, you name it, right? Lights Out, anything. 
they have like there's a certain uh, rhythm or it's almost like a musical or mathematical structure to them mm. as far as like when they're going to deliver uh, the scare moments, you know, and you can almost set your watch by them. If you watch any of these movies, it's mm -hmm. like every 10 minutes, there's a, there's a 10 minute, you know, there's maybe some character building. Then there's a quiet moment, build of suspense to a shocking payoff, rinse and repeat. Mm -hmm. You do this over and over again, over again for the whole movie, and it kind of gives you this sensation that you're like on a scary roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But these movies that we're talking about uh, don't have that sort of uh, architectural build to them, mm -hmm. right? No. No, not necessarily. But do no. you think that that's why when a mainstream audience then trained on commercial Hollywood scary movies go to see these, they go like, well, it wasn't scary. Yeah, I, th I think. That's the yeah. Go ahead. Well, I, 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 that's the same reason why the critics love it. It's because it doesn't do that. Exactly. Mm. Right. Sorry, interrupted. No, I was just gonna. That's basically what I was gonna say. I was gonna say our choices are so slim for what are what is considered good horror that when anything is slightly different, we're like, it's incredible, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anything that slightly subsedes our expectations is like, oh my god, I can't yeah. believe we were gifted this. It's so amazing. <laughs> we're, starving, <Yeah>. <laughs> we're starving. We're yeah. starving. <laughs> you know, it like. Uh, we'll get into it later on with the mailbag, but like especially the early two thousands, when you look at what horror movies were like in the early two thousands compared to like right around this this year, twenty fourteen is when it really shifted. Um, like horror audiences were not really being taken seriously as like we need to produce content. It was like, oh, just repackage the same thing over and over again mm -hmm. and it'll make money. But right around this time is when like people started making choices and being more daring with horror movies, and that's when it really started to financially pay off. Mm-hmm. Um, but it took until 2014 for that to happen, you know. So daring with their choices that people aren't calling them horror movies anymore. They'll do anything that they can to not label certain things horror. That's yeah, the big question. That's if true. You, if you read the sites nowadays, like, is it really a horror movie? People trying to label these things something else. You know why they get, but like, you, they start off as a horror movie because, okay, people in power in the horror industry, be very careful with what you say on the internet because you're part of the problem. William Friedkin looking at you for the Babadook, he said this was the scariest thing he's ever seen since The Exorcist. You know, like, Calm down. like people that have clout in the horror industry need to be very careful of what they say on the internet. Stephen King is very guilty of this too. Like, it's <laughs> scare the shit out of me. I've yeah, don't listen to Stephen seen. King you know? on any review he has of a movie. But, yeah, but what, this I is mean, also the guy who went out and championed uh, Dark Tower. Yeah, until yeah. they were like, all right, wait, the movie's over and out of theaters and everything. Yeah, it sucked. Yeah, <laughs> but the, that's the thing. Like, they'll say things like this, and it becomes the pull quote on the DVD. It becomes the whole marketing campaign, mm -hmm. and then that's what creates unrealistic expectations for everybody else. So, like, people in horror, please choose your words carefully because, yeah. you know, they will they get do? carried if they far have, away. If they're having, like, a, subje a subjective experience mm -hmm. where it is, like, you know, whatever, it's Rosemary's Baby. Well, I, he didn't, yeah. uh, did he say The Exorcist? He said The Friedkin, Exorcist, the yeah. director of The Exorcist. Yeah. But, he, yeah, he had said something yeah. to that effect where but, it was, like. But he's probably, Louis Friedkin has probably never watched a horror movie. Since then. Since then. Yeah. Or at least none of the stuff that comes out mainstream. He's not he watched all the conjuring. I, I will bet he has know? not. Yeah. So he watches something like this, and like he said, I mean, he's mm -hmm. got an altered perception of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the thing. They, like, the way they are viewing these movies are so different than a way anyone in a normal audience is going to view them, that their opinion almost doesn't count in that sense, you know? Yes. Yeah, so it's like, eh. You're Stephen King. You're yeah. like, I, yeah. Can't trust you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So be careful what you say, horror you people. Trust, what is it, Rex Reed? Fuck that guy, too. Uh, <laughs> Rex yeah. Reed has the great, he's like the grumpy old man <laughs> he really of is. film criticism. He hates everything. He it's hates fantastic. everything. Um, but you were also mentioning that this is uh, Women in Horror mm -hmm. Month. Um, uh, I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess there have always been women uh, making horror films. Mm hmm. Um, We've done two of them. We did America. Near Dark, which was yep. directed oh, by yeah. Catherine Bigelow, mm -hmm. and we did Pet Cemetery, which was directed by Mary Lambert. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, women have always been making horror movies. And did we do um, Sorority House Massacre? Yeah, and yeah. that was a woman's Slum yeah, yep. Slumber Party Massacre, I think, was the, the one done by... They, they both are. Are they both? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. The one... Uh, Amy yeah, because she was an apprentice on uh, Slumber Party Massacre, mm -hmm. and then she yeah. made Sorority House Massacre. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I thought that was ended up making the same thing that the guys made. But yeah. that's that yeah. was, <laughs> listen to our yeah. uh, <laughs> podcast on that. Yeah. Right. American Psycho, a modern classic, yep. was directed by a woman. Jennifer's Carrie was directed body. by a woman. Jennifer's Body. Yep. There's a like I think horror is probably one of the most generous genres of film when it comes to allowing women to make them. 
uh, out there. Horror is the most generous jo- uh, genre of film for most making. things. For, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, true. that's true. That's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Which is why I'm always like, you know, uh, you know, whenever somebody s- turns their nose up at, oh, it's a horror film. I'm like they've been doing things in horror films that you can't do in mainstream exactly. yeah. uh, films. You know, dealing with different subjects because mm-hmm. you can you can code them in a horror movie and still make it entertaining. Where a drama would be like. Oh God! Yeah. Could you guys imagine this movie as a drama? I, yes, I don't. I, I don't want to watch it. Well, it's almost there. To be fair, it is. It's, like, it's just like it's, it's, I don't it's know. Like this side of the pos- of possession. I kept getting a possession vibe a little bit. Maybe it's just because of the dank colors and just kind of the dour atmosphere. But I found this in. movie wildly more entertaining oh, than most dramas, would, though. Oh, yeah, That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But it is. It great. has the like gravitas of a of a drama, but it's much more entertaining than most dramas. Mm. So the movie is about a uh, troubled, well, a troubled family. They're all troubled. Yeah, they're all yeah. troubled, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Essie troubled. Davis is the name <laughs> of the lead actress. Mm-hmm. We would also know her from Game of Thrones. Uh, in the most recent season, she was the actress that played Cersei in the traveling show in Bravos. She mm-hmm. had some interactions with Arya. Mm-hmm. That's all I'll say about it for spoilers. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And she has a seven-year-old child. Well, she loses her her husband in a car accident on the way to the hospital to deliver her son. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, wow. What's more tragic than that? Mm-hmm. And this is what starts off the movie. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, cut to seven years later, she's got this child in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, and he appears to be uh, suffering from some type of, I don't know, what, you, what do you call this stuff now? Disassociative disorders. Or um, there's warning signs. I think like say. a cognitive disorder. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a yeah, parent I'd... or a psychologist. I can't <laughs> speak to any. But uh, yeah, no, it there's felt definitely. very familiar. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so you see, you're the only one who's a parent of I us. Know. So, I mean, I'm sure this. Hit, I identified with. Aside from the uh, ghost that haunted these people, uh, I associated, uh, I felt her pain. Yeah. At some moments in this movie. Mm hmm. Because sometimes children have problems. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's very. It doesn't help that uh, if your child is very creepy looking, as this child is. <laughs> this child's Lord, a good child actor. He child is. Actor. He really is. But my God, is he creepy? That looking. part when he's having a fit in the car, like, I almost can't look at uh. him. You know, like. The way he's like pulling at his skin and I the way rem- his eyes roll back. I'm I like, remember Ugh. when I watched this, I kept texting Colin. I was like, this kid is annoying as fuck. Is this entire movie like this? Because I can't do it. That's what genius, like, he's that's so annoying. about this movie, Yes, though. it is. It really is. This is this the, your, your first time watching it, watching it since then? Yeah, this is yeah, the this second is, time I've watched it. This is the it. second the time I've ever watched it. play like completely different the second yeah. time? Yes, right? yes. Oh, okay. And okay. we were... It okay. hurts more. And Michaela and I were talking about that. The first time I watched it... um, I got all the scares like mm-hmm. it, it affected me and all with all the scares um, but the second time I think since I knew what was coming um, the emotional part is what got me I, I'm feeling much more triggered than I yeah, expected to absolutely. feel from a movie I'd already seen before absolutely you know I was triggered from start to finish oh I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> well my emotional allegiances switched the, the fir- between the first time I watched it and the second time were you with the mother the first time yes. with the kid this yes. time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is really really odd because you're like the first time through it's like this kid is crazy, yeah. right? And he, he is going to kill this woman, you know, or something. And then she, like, you know, I mean, I guess this is where the movie goes, right? But yeah, there's it's a switch like, that flips in the middle of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that is the product of great writing, I think. And I, it's a, it's a lot because you know where the story is going to go. So this time watching the kid, you see his triggers in a completely different light. Mm-hmm. You see what he's going through in a completely different light. Yeah, because this time around, yeah. I identified with him, yep, going exactly. like, I'm trying to save my mo- my mother. You know, and so he's doing yep. everything he's seen. It's not rational behavior, but no, no but he's also know. six. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's, yeah, it's the rational behavior of a six-year-old, and yeah, like you said, you can see it throughout, like the way he clings to her mm-hmm. throughout this movie. Mm-hmm. Like he's scared for her. Yeah, from the start. And he's, I mean, you see, you see a bravery you don't see in the first time. Like a little kid that's seeing a monster and he's like inventing weapons to defeat it and he just like wants to protect his mom. Yeah, especially if like he's seeing that oh, monster. Yeah. Oh my God. So this monster. Scared the shit out of me. It, it appears. Uh, well, I guess it, it enters the house in the form of a uh, like a child's uh, like a uh, children's a pop-up book. book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The creepiest With pop-up the book. The scariest the grotesque, pop-up book like charcoal time. illustrations that <laughs> yeah. you could imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Where we just got dark Can't. eyes and. <laughs> Yeah, Grim. and a nice yeah. little creepy rhyme. Uh, you know, it has that rhyming prose or mm-hmm, whatever. Yeah. And, 
And the, the first time that we see this book, um, you know, the kid wants to have it read to him at bedtime. The kid already has, like, he's exhibiting uh, antisocial behavior, right? He's talking about finding monsters and bashing their heads in. I'm going to kill it, Mom. He's building all these weapons. Uh, and he has an interest mm-hmm. in magic. He's afraid of something under the bed. This is all like right at the at the check, beginning. Check. check. <laughs> no. Oh, right? Sean's like, check. I've lived through all this. <laughs> and then this book shows up, Jesus, and there's a ghost in my head. <laughs> and it says that uh, you know basically it, it's the prelude to you know it says that uh, you're going to hear in three knocks, and that lets the Babadook in, and then once it's in, you're going to change, and you're, you're going to wish you were dead or something like that. And then there's empty pages, blank pages in this book, mm-hmm. and. Uh, Man, how do you attack this? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Like it I said, I'm shell shocked right beast. now from the triggering emotional journey. I <laughs> did not expect to go on it's with a this beast. movie. Man, you didn't after having seen it already. What were you, um, what happened to you? I guess when you were watching it this time. Yeah, because like the first, like I said, the first time it's just you. You don't know what to expect, and and you're waiting for those. Knowing it's a horror movie, you're, you're waiting, waiting for, for the those, monster. You're waiting for the monster. You're waiting yeah. for those moments. The second time, you're understanding this like psychological turmoil I'm that they're too all much going about through. It. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm thinking too much about it while it's happening. Right. Yeah. And also, yeah. I think, like you said, in the first viewing, you're waiting for the monster. In the yeah. second viewing, it's like the monster is. It's I don't it's tertiary, it's tertiary secondary ancillary yeah. to yeah. what yeah. is going on between them. Mm-hmm. Um, like you almost forget about the monster once you get into like the yeah, towards and, towards the uh, second and third half of the movie or and, second and third part of the movie. And the way they make this movie, the way they shoot it, is they're not trying to they're not trying to make it the focus of this, right? Because it's all just like bits, pieces, angles, something in the background, and all that. They don't want it to be the main focus. It's there. Right. It's causing. It, it's part of. Mm-hmm. It is. They are the thing, and the mm-hmm. the Babadook is part of them. Like, yeah. it, it fits in with them. Like, it's the smaller part you can't, of the like, story. This movie tells you up front what the rules are. You can't get rid of it. You, you can't, can't get rid it, of it. Yeah. Like, you just have to manage it. Mm-hmm. Like, that is... Like, I feel like if you miss that, the movie won't make sense to you. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. that's important to understanding mm-hmm. the movie. But, there, like, the most depressing things about this movie to me are not the obvious things. It's the things, like... When she looks across at her neighbor watching her just watch TV at night by herself mm-hmm. and she wants that. Yeah. Like, yeah. like her wanting of that. And when she's working uh, the bingo thing mm-hmm. in the nursing home and realizes her job is fucking pointless and doesn't matter, <laughs> but yet she has to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Five Those billion. are the two most depressing moments I've yeah. seen in a movie since like Requiem for a Dream. Like that's <laughs> like It's like that level of depressing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the character is going through, I mean, like the, it's just, uh, you know, one of those, I guess this is also like a horror movie uh, setup. This is where you do it more th- so than in a drama, but applying these levels of stress, right? She's got mm-hmm. some kind of you know, just by the way tooth she's poking her, t- yeah. her her jaw, she's got something going on with her tooth. Mm-hmm. Her kid's acting up. She can't seem to leave him at school. She He's can't getting sleep. kicked out. Ugh. Yeah, and I think that's it. Since, not, not since Insomnia, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that movie, have I felt like the just drag right. of not sleeping on a character mm-hmm. and like watching this person just fraying? You know, yeah. their mind mm-hmm. is fraying and because she- there's all this external stuff and you can't sleep. Yeah, going on. or when you do, and they portray it very well in this visually. It's she um, covers her head, and then just the mm-hmm. the quick light coming over, and then it's just it's morning. It's they do that several oh times. God. She sits in front and of the television at it, one point, and I like all of a sudden the sun's up, and she hasn't. I know slept. what that feels like. Yeah, <laughs> I know exactly what that feels like. And like that the, that moment of relief when they show Ugh. him take his his medicine that will make him sleep, and then yeah. the way she just like floats down under her bed. It it's yeah. just like yeah, she this floats under bed. She's also floating. It almost feels like she's floating between rooms when she goes and sees him yeah he's mm-hmm. still sleeping she just goes back mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the calmness in that scene yeah. right there but ironically i think that's the point when the actual well i mean if we're saying there actually is a creature in this movie and this is debatable i guess what we're gonna have to talk about mm-hmm. but yeah. that's the moment like it seems like that you know everything builds to you know she is at her wits end because I think he's also pushed his cousin, his like six year old cousin, out of a treehouse. That point. bitch deserved it. And yeah, she did. She 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 was <laughs> a real piece of dad. shit. 
Well, and now that she said, like, your dad didn't want to be around for you yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. She Jesus. Was, she, Kids are the worst. Yeah, she basically yeah. said, like, your dad would rather be dead than, like, be your dad. Uh, yeah. yeah. She's like, like, she no, was a whole piece of shit. Nobody likes you. And you, you know where yeah. she's hearing that from? Her mom. Her mom. Yeah. So, yeah. Which is, which is, like, Sam's, like, Her mom's, aunt. like, his aunt. aunt. Yeah. yeah. It's like, that's fucked up because, like, kids don't just say, come up with that shit on their own. They no. hear that from someplace. Yeah. This is why I'm not, I'm worried about my kid, but I'm also fucking worried about the other kids of the problem as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Other kids are just, Bitches. Like, this is the type of movie you see a kid get pushed out of a treehouse and you're like, she fucking deserved it. That's what you know? just like, yeah. like, I didn't yeah. see anything. Yeah. Yeah. She just fell. Yeah. I've seen so many comments online where, like, people, uh, you know, are like, it, it really hate, what's the kid's name? Samuel. Samuel, thank you. Mm-hmm. I keep thinking it's Noah. That's the kid that plays That's them. the actual kid's name, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, like, that's the read that they have on the movie. It's like, I couldn't watch this movie because that kid was so annoying. So they that, quit 20 know? minutes in. They yeah. didn't make it past twenty yeah. minutes. Well, basically. they check out. I think yeah. you know. It's like, but but that's that's it's very true. That like I said earlier, when I, when I first watched, I was texting Colin. I was like, can, I cannot watch two hours or however long it is. Right, of this kid that. being this way. Yeah, I was like, does it get better? And he's like, just stick with it. Yeah, no, <laughs> that, but that tells me those people have not finished the movie. Yeah, or they didn't, or they didn't pay attention. Yeah, a, I ended up shutting point. it off, yeah. but for different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> but I think sometimes you know, it's like the, you know, you have characters like that in movies, but. I don't know. It's done. It's calibrated, you know, by the director and by the performers for an effect that it's working on you. You know, I mean, I think you are supposed to feel exactly how you were feeling. Yeah, it was effective. Yeah. But I think like there's some people in the audience who just sit there and go like, you know, this is not what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, A, yeah, A, I don't want to feel this. B, I was promised a, a monster called the Babadook. If you look on the cover, there's a big shadowy thing with the, you know, it's like, so where is this monster? The monster does show up, I guess, or, you know, then the, uh, at this moment where she seems to get her uh, relief, mm-hmm. right? Then the knocking on the door happens, and then all of a sudden there's this manifestation in the house of, like, something actually creeping around the house. Mm-hmm. Um, so... The monster does seem to come from the basement, right? Am I wrong, or is that where they first like encounter? I think like the, uh, you know, the hat and the. Well, yeah, because she yeah. says all your dad's things are down there, and that's like we'll get into it towards the end. But that's right. where all this comes from. Well, mm-hmm. that's, that's the it's so, like the manifestation point. Of yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. It comes from the basement. There. It lives in the basement. The basement is mm-hmm. the spawn point mm-hmm. for this yeah. monster. Yeah, because she has not appropriate well, appropriately successfully dealt with her husband's death. I think this is like one of the biggest, this is the biggest linchpin in her character, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like she, to the point where when the uh, elderly neighbor next door, who's like, you know, the loveliest neighbor in the world. I wish I had a neighbor like that. God damn. She's so sweet. I wish I had a neighbor that would come knock on my door and be just like, just want to know. I just want you guys to know. I love you. But they are for you. They don't specify. I think that moment was another, that was the key point going into the third act. I mean, you had to have that because I'm like, how do you pull up from this, like, you know, terminal thing that's happening? Right, Yeah. yeah. And I think that moment like right. changes. She you know, also just like was not offended by the kid asking about her Parkinson's either. Mm-hmm. You know, like she was like, yeah, well, he just speaks his mind like his dad. That's yeah. just how he is. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, and that's I mean, that's key to the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. It feels like acceptance. I think acceptance mm-hmm. is the big thing at the end of this movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. but because when she when when the old neighbor, old neighbor, the old lady neighbor brings up <laughs> the husband, the old lady labor. Like, uh, Essie Davis's character cannot handle it. She's yeah. just, why do you keep bringing him up? You know, it's like, this is seven years on, and she yeah. just cannot face, uh, you know, the fact that he's dead. And I think she hates her son in some way, because I think... She resents him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because, she does. And she won't celebrate his birthday on the day, because that's the day that her husband died. Right. I couldn't... If that was... If somebody told me that in real life, like, I couldn't... I couldn't fault anybody for feeling that way at some yeah. point. That mm-hmm. seems like a natural thing. And I, people who experience that, I would have to imagine, be like, I know it doesn't uh, it make sense. It's not his fault that mm-hmm. this happened. Mm-hmm. But I can totally see people feeling that way towards their child because of this happened. Because it's hard not – it would be hard not to associate uh, the event with right. that. Like that's right. – because it is associated. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. If yeah. you look at these two things independently. Okay. So dealing with grief, even when you have people to support you is still fucking hard. Yeah. When you have a kid 
and you have a co-parent, it's still hard. Can you imagine having a kid alone and having to deal with grief alone mm-hmm. and still have it like having being expected to keep your shit together like you're a normal nuclear family? You know, mm-hmm. like that's the problem here is that like she kind of had to bottle all that shit up because she had to take care of a kid. Yeah. You yeah. know? She even says that later on when she's uh um, I think she is it her sister she's talking to. She's like, I don't know why you keep mentioning her. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, but it's a, it's a it's a yeah. telling phrase that she's using there. It's like I don't keep talking about him. I think well, that's the problem. Mm-hmm. Like she's yeah. trying to just mm-hmm. she's not dealing with it. She's shutting it yeah. away. Yeah, she's taken all of his stuff and locked them up in the basement, which I think is mm-hmm. supposed to represent the basement of her subconscious. Yeah. Right? right. This yeah. is where the Baba Duck comes from. Mm-hmm. You know, is a manifestation that these two people mm-hmm. in this close environment seem to create. Mm-hmm. But at this moment, or in the halfway point where the movie does seem to switch. And the uh, the book reappears after you try to burn it. You know, it comes back and it's laying out, you know, uh, like a homicidal tendency in the mother, like in, in foreshadowing, like this movie's going to have a bad ending that, you know, this mom is going to try and murder her son. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that, you know, being possessed by the Babadook in air quotes or whatever. Yeah. Right. That's where this is leading. Yeah. Well, in the book, like, like as she starts going, like gets possessed by it, like the book starts filling out its own pages. And like, we see the like horrible crude animation of like her strangling the dog in the book. And then mm-hmm. she does that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. like, head goes. Meep. So like, as far as she knows, like either the book is predicting or it's, or it's like just reflecting what's happening. She doesn't really know, but like, mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, we're kind of giving these footnotes along the way through the book of, like, what's going to happen. But, mm-hmm. yeah, the, the dog thing does happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, then you figure then she'll also be coming mm-hmm. after the kid well, with the yeah, knife. That's, yeah. that's automatic, yeah. like, yeah. tension builders. Like, yeah. yeah, she did it. Yeah. She did that to the dog, like the book said. So then and you she did just... it to the dog so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> like, the dog, like, I mean, the dog had, like, it didn't turn on her in, like, uh, Kathy's curse way. But, like, <laughs> it, it just barked at her in a way that annoyed her, and yeah. she turned on it that well, quickly. That's, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. the hair trigger at that point. Mm-hmm. It's just, like, on the fucking razor's edge yeah. of something's going to set her off. She was going to watch her yeah. dateline. <laughs> the way I was watching that movie, I was not even sure that that dog barked at her. Because when you hear the barking, and then when you cut to the dog, the dog's just sitting there. Yeah, and with like, that yeah. look. Is this yeah. one of these, like, Well, but it was up in her mind. lap, and it was, like, struggling yeah. when she was trying to, like, cuddle with it. Yeah. Okay, and I'm not going to lie. It is a terrible feeling when you want to snuggle with your pet, and they fight, and they run away. That just oh. make you feel bad. You are yeah. like, fuck you. You're supposed to love me unconditionally, yeah. and you're running away right. from me. I just wanted like, to love you. Yeah. Come oh, back. Yeah. Like, there's I, a terrible feeling. I'm not going to This happens five times a day. Oh, yeah. I maul my cat all the time. That's why he, yeah, dog, you dogs never it, fight back. Yeah. Like, like, love your mother. Like, yeah. Yes. yeah. We've Every all yelled, day. At our, Every <laughs> we day. yelled at our pets to love us. And when yeah. you're already <laughs> feeling bad about yourself and your pet won't love, love on you, me. you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's, it, and then he doesn't know what to do. Do you guys start listing off the things you do for it? Yeah. Like, I feed you. Yeah. you I give you treats. <laughs> You would die without me. <laughs> you would have to fend for yourself in the wild without me. And you I'm know. constantly, I'm like, you wouldn't last 10 minutes out there yeah. all the time. It's a lot of yelling yeah. in that house. Well. I guess so. <laughs> Y'all need to get dogs. They just love you no matter what. You don't have that that's, problem with dogs. <laughs> I mean, that's what's stuff, great about that. Well, them. I know that's. I mean, that is. It's <laughs> just like, oh, they're just dumb it. and they love you. Mm-hmm. Aww. My cat's actually really snuggly. He's kind of like a dog. But every time a pet shows up in a horror movie, you it's can pretty much sign. call it right from the beginning that that pet's Sean not going to make it. Sean called it. And he I never seen that dog's going to die. Yeah, yeah, you don't put a pet in a horror movie unless it's going to die. Mm. Especially this one's like a fluffy white dog. Like it's too yeah. perfect for this yeah. movie. So you know, I'm it's die. that's when I got up and got a new drink. Uh, which one among you is a psychology uh, aficionado major or I took expert? it a lot for sort a of I took a few I, yeah, to I took some classes, took classes. Yeah. okay some so classes. Qu- there's the you know the 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 Freudian and the Jungian right mm-hmm. so every what, other person went it's like oh minor in psychology <laughs> right well I figured wait, so, wait what, what's that quote from Jingle All the Way and I took. I took a semester of psychology in junior college, so I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Sinbad says like that to yeah. Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe one of you learned people can yeah, enlighten me it. as far as like you know. I mean, the psychology that's going on here, this repressed guilt or whatever that's yeah. manifesting mm-hmm. itself, is this a Jungian archetype or a Freudian? Uh, care? It's more Jungian. I, I yeah, Jungian. Yeah, it's not Freudian. No. Freudian didn't get that far. No. No. <laughs> no, it really didn't. It didn't go that deep. No. So yeah. what's the Jungian psychology there? I mean, what is it? How does what are, what are we talking about? 
I mean, like in academically, not the movie. Like, what you know? Why did he, so he uh, outlined certain like boogeymen or whatever? Is that Jungian? Well, yeah, it's. I mean, it's archetypes. easier. Archetypes. Yeah, um, it's easier to subscribe things that you are guilty for to a nameless entity than okay. it is to. Uh, well, that is what then it, then it, then it yeah. is to like accept, accept that it, you are yes. responsible for yes. it. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So I'm throwing that out there. Is that what's happening here, or is there a literal monster in this movie? How do you? you guys I think it's up to interpretation. Well, here, how do you read it? Yeah, I read it as the Baba Duke is like. An allegory for mental illness slash grief, and I think the the reason why it's an allegory is because they say you can't get rid of it. Like I feel like if this was any other monster movie, you could get rid of it, but because it's an it's like you can't get rid of mental illness, you can't get rid of no. grief. You just gotta it's learn true. to live with it mm-hmm. and, and learn how to manage it. Here's it's almost the perfect yeah uh, representation of here's that. my yeah. cut. Co- I here's, feel like it's gotta be. Yeah, here's mental. my question for you: Did she create that book? Yes, that book was well, made just for this movie. But you're no, assuming... no, no. Did did the mom create that book? I mean, he just appeared on their shelf, right? But it like said we didn't that see... she was a children's she was a children's author. Yeah. author. And but this those, is, yeah, I mean, guess this is my question. It's like, do we see the movie? Are you supposed? Do we read it? Does it work better if we interpret the entire thing as a fairy tale? In which case, you can explain then why the kid can see the Baba Duck if it is a conjuration of the the mom's mind, mm-hmm. but he sees it. Mm-hmm. So well, they're clearly, both dealing with the two sides of the same coin. You know what I'm saying? But they like, see it. They see an external like creature. They're right. seeing a physical entity. Right. I think you know. We don't necessarily see it when they do. Mm-hmm. We see their reaction shots. Right. Like, oh my god, there's something over there that's clearly in the room with True. me or whatever. But that can, but that can be argued for any scenario where people see something and other people join in Mm -hmm. that can be argued in any situation especially since they have both already seen this physical image in a book you know Mm -hmm. maybe she did maybe she did create the book well she created this image he's already seen it so he already has it in his imagination what it would look like so they can both theoretically see it at the same time i agree with that i think she's actually seeing it i think he because we're also looking at an adult who's... And an impressionable child. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Yeah. It's an adult who can, like, through her... Whatever she's working through and at this point, whatever she's conjured, mm-hmm. I think she can see it, whether it's real or not. Mm-hmm. I also think a six-year-old, whatever they conjure in their mind, I think they can see it. I think because he's... I think, yes, she did create that book. And I think because he saw those imagery, I think that that is as real... Whether it's there or not, I think it's as real as it can be to that six-year-old. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing they share. Mm-hmm. She can see it. And he he pretty much can see it as well. Mm-hmm. And I think they share that mm-hmm. in what they're going through. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's real for both of them in that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they actually do conjure a physical I think entity so. that's yeah. terrorizing them. Because mm-hmm. I guess, you know, I'm just – because I grant you, you can read the movie that way. Yeah. But it's like if you see it like as a complete allegory, then – you know, it's like, well, it doesn't really matter where the book came from. The book, you know, just exists, you know, because it never really was a book. The story wasn't real. It's just they're telling a story about, you know, how do you illustrate, uh, you know, this kind of grief, uh, depression, uh, mental illness, mm-hmm. all, you know, just the yeah. the destructive uh, you know, kind of like the ripple effect that you know, from the center that goes bad with the, you know, the trauma mm-hmm. that ripples out and just destroys, you know, cracks their lives and eventually mm-hmm. ends up cracking the, you know, the walls of their literal right. house, right. <laughs> literally, you know. I think the book is real, though. But like, th- there was a point at the end of the movie, though, when she goes to, like, feed at the worms in the basement, when he goes, can I come down and see? And she says, oh, when you're older, you'll be able to see it or mm-hmm. something to that that's, effect. That's the, when that you're older, whole you'll scene, be able to understand. Yeah, that's yeah. the, like... Like when you're older, you'll be able to like grapple with the emotional right. things I am dealing with. But right now, yeah. just be a kid. Just yes. be a kid exactly. right now. That is yeah. that exactly. Yeah. I get that, and but I, I, I might sound stupid here, but I really don't understand the ending. Then, if it's really an allegory, what the fucks with the worms and that shit? It's well, I don't understand. It's treatment, right? And some she's actually giving. They it have a to treat. do like yeah, some sort that, of. Your presentation on screen to show her that she's managing it. That's yeah, what I yeah, think it is. is. Yeah. It's like you that can't is. get rid of the thing, so you lock it away. Well, in and she the, was digging up something, again. so she's digging into like things she's buried and not dealt with yes. to manage it. But she's also become like you know, 
her way of beating it, I suppose, you know, it's like in these in that moment, I was kind of like, you know, toward the end of the film, I'm like, you're kind of dealing with like a Freddy Krueger kind of situation here, right? Where Freddy Krueger manifests himself and comes out of the dream and he's an actual physical threat in the real world. And the way that Nancy's able to beat him is by turning her back on him and saying like, well, you don't have any power over me. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like mm-hmm. you're, you're shit. You're nothing. And that's gets rid of him. Uh this seems this to be the opposite. Goes, well, but it goes the same, a similar way, right? Like, the thing is actually, like, you know, shaking the fucking subwoofer and the, you know, walls are cracking. And she's like, this is my house. Get the fuck, you know, if you touch my kid again, I'm going to fucking kill you. And the they did something with the volume of her voice where her, her voice actually reached the level of, like, its howl. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, in that, it's like she discovers... You know, that she has the power actually over this thing within her, right? It's like, yes. ultimately, mm-hmm. it is. If you created it, you can control yes. it. Right. Let's- and so she kind of, like, talks it down. But then she, like, has to become, like, like its custodian or, like, almost a mother mm-hmm. to the thing. Because, you know, when she goes down in the basement where it's locked in, I like the fact that they've got all the the different locks on the door. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. the basement door. But she goes down there and she's like, shh. It's okay because the, like the thing comes at her, it's like, and she's yeah. like, oh my god, and she's like, shh, shh, it's okay. And that's I do what therapy is. That's what therapy is. Yeah, exactly. that's that's therapy is. Yeah. 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 You have to be the custodian of these yeah. things. You yeah. you have to be. You have to take the initiative you have to, to do it. Yeah. yeah, you have to take care of it. But that it's also like, isn't that also giving her power over it? It's like, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no yeah. it totally Quiet is. Down. Yeah, you know, you're not gonna hurt anybody. You're yeah. just gonna you know relax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you said, it's her digging the stuff digging up, and up then stuff, yeah, presenting yeah. it to the okay. problem, and then. Oh, I mean, yeah. that's that's kind of what I was feeling with it. I just, I I don't know if I'm totally on board with how they did it with the worms and her feeding it. Like I I get what they were doing, but yeah, because it, it, it was literally odd eating to me. worms. Is that yeah. what the thing eats? Like it, it's it was just odd to thing? me. But I, I like. I, I like think, that yeah, that theory though that's up, this, yeah. her dealing with it and you know it, it's this monster that's always going to be there and she has to take care of it it's going to pop up and you have to deal mm-hmm. with it I'm I'm bored with that I just wasn't well really that and that like she's that. she's with Samuel in the garden when they're like putting the worms in the bowl and she's like oh you got a lot of them today or something like that and I was like oh I was immediately sent back to like therapy sessions it is being like, right. being like, like oh we got through a lot of stuff today and that's like oh my god right her exclamation to that point felt. I, I've never been in therapy, but it uh, it, that is it, therapy. it felt. But that's yeah. what it felt like. Somebody would, <laughs> it, the feeling of it felt mm-hmm. like like we got through a lot today. Yeah. It's like, oh, you found a lot today. Yeah, yeah. and taking yeah. those things and mm-hmm. feeding it to the yeah. quote unquote monster at that yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think oh that's intentional. I mean, oh yeah, I yeah. definitely yeah. yeah. Can we do? We, have we said uh, the director's name? Jennifer Kent. Jennifer Kent. Yeah. We should we should keep saying her name. Yeah, like, she's say great. Over right? and over again. Yeah. She, <laughs> she's done <laughs> this. Is, yeah. She wrote and directed. Yeah. Wrote and directed. Yeah. yeah, we should say her name a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for reals. Well, it has uh, the other aspect to like the healing process. I think we mentioned earlier the neighbor coming over. You know, because there's a point in the movie. Where you really do become afraid that she's going to kill the kid, and he's afraid of her. And I guess that's where it switches halfway through the movie, because mm-hmm. then you're like, she's becoming a fucking unhinged monster, cutting the telephone cord. And, you know, she sees, she wakes up from watching TV, you know, having this insomnia, and sees him lying bloodied on the couch. Mm-hmm. I think this is after a news report that's like, a mother stabbed her seven-year-old yeah. child today with a knife. And so she wakes up, sees him bloody on the couch. She's like, oh, my God, did I do this? And you're like, did she just kill the fucking kid and doesn't know it because she's crazy? And then she, then all of a sudden she wakes up and she's standing over him with a big butcher knife and he's afraid of her, you know? Yeah. So you're kind of having all of that, uh, all of this uh, build up to like, you know, that like she's becoming this, this uh, monstrous entity in the house the the part in this movie that like I, I always forget when it comes and it gets me every time is when she's like nodding off watching tv and she's watching like a dateline special basically mm-hmm. um and it's like the so-and-so murdered herself and her kid and like you see like the crime scene tape you see like a neighbor crying just like a dateline and special the yeah. and then her oh. maniacal face in the window and the way it like pans in real close on her face mm-hmm. that gets me so every creepy. time I it's hate so that scene imagery. yeah there's yeah. a couple like subtle moments in this that just fucking terrify that me that one comes out of nowhere yeah. though because she's like channel flipping and then all of a sudden it's boom yeah. dateline murder special pan in on her maniacal face in the yeah. window after she that murdered that moment 
and yeah. then the the first moment they show the actual Babadook when it, he's standing behind the old woman next door, and there's no sound or anything. It's just he's there. You just see like the edge oh of his God. hand and his hat. You, you see, don't even see like a. Full you see his thing face. Yeah, you never. I don't yeah. think through yeah. the entire even, movie you never get like a clear, good look at what which it actually. Thank God. Which see, I appreciate. Yeah. I like. I don't want them to. Mm-hmm. I like the little things they do. When she goes to the police station mm-hmm. and in the back of the cop, there's just the fucking hat and the thing yeah. and mm-hmm. the hands mm-hmm. coming out and everything. Well, there was a scene in the kitchen where it seemed like there was an out of focus Babadook standing. Because the way That's the framing was done, yeah. it's like it's standing right there. But no, this is a. I think it was. She may have been losing her tooth at that point. Which she pulls it out. But behind her in the hallway, oh. because the way it was framed, it looked like the the guy was standing there. And it's like, okay, okay. when we rack focus, it's going to be there. But when it rack focuses, you know, she like walks toward, I think, the, mm-hmm. the, the front door. It's the front door. Mm-hmm. And just the way that the light's coming yeah. through the front door. And then I'm like... Jesus Christ, did they plan that? Or was I seeing things? Are you or, seeing things, Colin? Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but you're like, wow, they're really like in your headspace mm-hmm. with, yeah. with the design of this movie. And the production design, we also should have said, uh, the the because mostly it takes place in this house, Yeah, but it's all painted like these depressing gray Shades of gray. It's like a charcoal yeah. painting, this whole house, yeah. basically. It, it, which well, is that's cool. Well, I'd love to live here. Like, but, yeah. Which, yeah, it's yeah, like you the would, book. But it's also like the book. It's like yeah. the book, yeah. yeah. Can we also like stop and give props to the sound department on this? Oh, my God. the mixing and everything? Because, it, I mean, we had to turn it up during this part because the dialogue feels low, but the sound yeah. of everything in this movie is amped up high yeah. on purpose. Yeah. That's why I'm wondering be. if we were if the mix was off or something because the center channel was like really low. I mean, my I sound system's calibrated right. for everything but else. I don't know, but watched, I think but the, it's whether it's off or anything, but it's purposeful that the dialogue is low, but. Those so you have sounds. to strain to hear mm-hmm. it. Then. Right, yeah. you're listening. Close you're listening enough. closely. It's yeah, like that, with the sounds of everything. It's like that's okay. There was a scene in Gone Girl where I almost complained to like the theater tech. Okay, there's like a scene in the very early on in Gone Girl where like they're at a club and they're like talking to each other and like whispering in each other's ears and like I could not hear a single word they were saying and like you could just hear the music of the club. But that was intentional. Like, oh, yeah. like what they were saying was not important. It was the fact that they were like having this moment right. was important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like yeah, anytime they were driving, the road noise was way louder than whatever they were. Saying speaking to each other. Yeah. yeah, and the important stuff came through in the sound yeah. mm-hmm. more so than the dialogue. Now, there was there was a moment I wanted to ask you guys about. It might have been... I don't know if it was when she killed the dog or when the son stabbed her in the leg. Um, I, f- I thought there was a quick flash when her face was actually the Babadook face. Like, just really quickly when she, like, ba- when she, like that. flips up. Blink. It's, it's, it's a split yeah. second. It's quite possible. Yeah. I didn't know if I mean, anyone it's else possible, saw it. but I, yeah. I didn't catch it. Quite possible. It, but it's like, possible. like an Exorcist three type, it's or Exorcist split type sec- of thing. Where it's, it's a split like, second. Ace. The only reason I noticed because her, her it looked like she had like that black that black smile. That's yeah. the only reason I noticed it. I mean, I noticed that there was. I kept waiting for stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. I noticed the makeup was very purposeful in this movie. Like yeah. there's one point in time, like right when the like uh, the Australian equivalent of the DCFS comes to visit, yeah. um, like when he says he hasn't slept, like the kid's eye makeup is insane for like mm-hmm. black circles under his mm-hmm. eyes. Like it almost is Babadook level, like dark lines mm-hmm. under his eyes. It's crazy. So, I mean, it's entirely possible that they mm-hmm. did do that for a second. Because like, I don't know if it's just how good the actress is or if it's makeup or if it's both, but like once she becomes like possessed by the Babadook, her face is crazy looking. Mm-hmm. She, because I've seen her in other things, um, she just looks yeah. really tired. I no, mean, they I've, have that kind of rosacea mm-hmm. effect, yeah, you know. Yeah. In the, but just, I've I've seen her in something else where she has this like maniacal moment where she just gets really angry about something, and she's just really good at making like changing her face up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she yeah. is. She's yeah. really good at that. There's even moments where it's just like I don't think they did anything to her eyes, but mm-hmm. her eyes look black. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure nothing was done to them. Yeah, but I'm just mm-hmm. saying, especially when she's like you said the. It, the rosacea part, but almost feels like yeah. black rosacea. Like mm. she's getting darker and more. And she's getting paler. Yeah. yeah. I feel like mm-hmm. the only thing they did in this movie really was like light everything really purposefully and yeah. then rely on the actors beyond mm. that. And like that was it. You yeah. know, like I feel like the lighting is very purposeful and yeah. direct. And then like the actors did the rest of it. But they had, you know, the, with all the painting and all that stuff, mm-hmm. the walls, yeah. like it gives it, yeah. I think you could probably without filters, maybe even, I would have to go back and look and see, you know, how they, photograph this but it seems this is it looks like a post-processed look that was probably done actually live on um, right yeah set. yeah yeah um <clears throat> feels like it well before we get all the way to the end here it's like the other thing that it seems like was part of this climax right is the confronting of uh the the husband character 
mm-hmm. who does show up mm-hmm. uh, a couple Twice, of times yeah. in the film, always in the basement. Am I wrong? Uh, I think he, sh- he showed up in the bedroom. He showed up in the, the bedroom. bedroom. Yeah. When the whole wall turns black, yeah. that's when he delivers like the last line she ever heard mm-hmm. him say, which is really sad. That like I think it's gonna rain. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. it's there's... right. It's right in front of the wardrobe, which is yeah. where he the Babadook comes out. Which of. in like yeah. the book, that's the first place we yes. see him pop out of yes. as he comes out of the wardrobe. Yeah. Well, I think it's a there's a door, and then there's a wardrobe, according to the book. I think. But yeah, the door the, to get into the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, the when wardrobe. He, yeah, when yeah. he first gets in, in yeah. the wardrobe, yes. But I like what the, the film does. And one of the early, you know, because she has a dream, you know, a waking nightmare, waking dream or something. And it seems like it's one of these moments of, uh, you know, hope or, you know, respite for this poor woman where she, you know, dreams that he's alive again or in the house. Mm-hmm. And so she goes to, you know, hug him. It's like, I missed you. And he says, you know, bring me the boy. And at that moment, you're kind of like, oh, my God, this is actually the Baba Duke yeah. itself looking like the husband. And mm-hmm. the way that she reacts to him, it implies that she is also has this understanding that, like, mm-hmm. this is not, you know, uh, her husband. But she doesn't. I don't think she closes the door on this idea. This isn't like the healing moment, right? It's like it no. comes right. later because later I think she is like, you're not my husband. Didn't she say that? Isn't that like the moment that kind of says you're not my husband, but it all because because that well, that image goes away mm-hmm. because I think especially when it's in front of the wardrobe, it's the Babadook taunting her and scaring her because what does she say to him. She says something well, to him, and then he gets he goes off into the blackness. Well, no, he, the well, he dies in front of her. Oh, oh that's right. right. She that's sees him die so all over again. Yeah. And that's the moment that she collapses. And I guess mm-hmm. that's maybe that was the moment that I felt like she, by reliving it and having to confront it head on. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. But this is mm-hmm. like it's like you have nowhere else to go from here. You right. have to start. You know, right. you are still alive. Yep. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, like you're not that's, suspended I mean, forever. That's, waiting. Right. That's that's base dealing with shit. Just like you're at that moment. Mm-hmm. God, could mm-hmm. you imagine having to like rewatch though that Relive? right in front of you, Buh. like you know, Buh. Buh. your mental health is already in the shitter, and then <laughs> right. on top of that, having to see that shit. I mean, yeah. but that's but isn't that? Um, I mean, but isn't that like therapy? Isn't that having to like? Maybe, not actually having not, to see it, not, but no, not to yeah. see it, no, but to like not even reliving to it, confront but to, it, like, yes. to, to, yeah. to realize what those moments are, yeah. And, and I mean, moving and, on from and that. if we're going off the, the theory that this is her memories manifested, she's seeing it in her head, yeah, you mm-hmm. know, so it's just reliving those memories that she's mm-hmm. pushed away for so long, yeah. And well, that's the thing, she's trying to delay herself that pain, that's why she won't right. talk about it because she doesn't want to feel the pain, right? Of you know, having you know, the memory of his loss. And I think that's right. also why she resents her son because he is a living reminder. Right, exactly. and he's yeah. constant, and he is constantly, mummy, mummy. He's constantly he's a challenge trying, on top of that, right, yeah. But he's constantly trying to like, hey, 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 and he, like he's a representation of that whole thing. He's yeah. just like, hey, look at me. I'm Remember here. Me. Deal with me. I'm here. Yeah, you have she, to like, deal with me. Like even in the beginning, she does not get a break from him because even like he sleeps in her bed and he grinds his teeth in his sleep, so she cannot oh, yeah. even sleep because yeah. he oh, yeah. just. Well, like it's constant. She's got to move to it's the ed- very edge of the bed to yeah. get away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, and oh, how dare her bitch of a sister give her any shit for oh this? Oh my god! You know what I'm saying like, no. like oh her Lord. sister like clearly hasn't made based on. I like, fucking love that moment when she snaps on that. <laughs> yeah. <other mom>. yeah. <laughs> oh god! You don't have time for the gym. That must be so horrible for right. you. <laughs> like, I just can't imagine. How do you like, relate to those? Yeah. To those women. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't imagine, like, resenting a member of my own family that's been through this much personal tragedy that much. You know? Like, it's... mm, Nah. Nah. Well, there's also a moment, um, you know, I mean, like, she... uh, You know, there's... Because, you know, her husband's gone, I think she longs for that, you know, connect... Like, a romantic connection. And, you know, we constantly see this. You know, she's looking at... Uh, people on TV, you know, uh, romantic scenes on TV or people in parking garages. And uh, there's an uncomfortable scene where she's uh, pleasuring herself and the kid comes oh, in. Oh, God. <laughs> like, ah. were, you, were, were you uncomfortable, Colin? Well, well it's, uh, it's an, uh, you, because you know. The way it's broken up You is know awkward. that the yeah. kid is going to come yeah. in the room. Yeah. Because yeah. she does yeah. not get a moment. Not a moment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so she doesn't even reach orgasm and the fucking kid comes in. <laughs> oh, that's a But, uh. <laughs> You know, that the, is unfortunate, yeah. Sean. <laughs> yeah. But there's this coworker. I'm with you. I understand. Thank you. <laughs> there's this coworker who Robbie. Is, yeah, and he's really kind oh, yeah. to her. And the he's, kind oh, of he's, nice. he's, he's the Bob Newby to her. 
Bueno to Ryder and Stranger <laughs> Things, basically. Like, he even comes over when the kid's sick and is like, I brought a puzzle because this is what I like to do when I was sick. He's yeah. this, that character. Yeah, like, but this is the, this, that's the telling moment because yeah. this guy, you know, sees her at the hospital and I think is, you know, romantically interested in her, but they're just kind of flirting and getting to know each other and whatever. And she reciprocates. And then there's this moment where he comes over to the house. And I think once he sees, because the kid's flipping out, and she's flipping out on the kid, and I think he, at that moment, you know, it's like, he realizes that he's wandered into, like, there's nothing mm-hmm. that he, yeah. like, he, he does can't not fix this. Yeah. in yeah. this yeah. Yeah. situation. Well, if you're and then like, we never see him again. Yeah, yeah we never see it. That's uh-uh. it. It's like, whoosh, that. That's they gone. didn't even have like real closure to that moment. Nope. No, they just, just like, like oh, he's oh. just like I'm out. Yeah, <laughs> but if you're like me and you've seen the movie The Snowtown Murders, he played John Bunting, um, Australia's most prolific serial killer in that movie. Oh, so I was like, get the fuck out of here, go ahead, <laughs> get on out. Movie, like, no. like <laughs> Snowtown Murders. No, no, you don't. Oh. No, no, it, no you it don't. sounds so good. It, Snowtown it does Murders. Sound good. Um, I saw things in that movie I wish I could unsee. Okay. Like, All right. It All right. Was, well, I'll just skip that. It's a really hard watch. I would not recommend it. I'll it's skip hard. it. It is a well crafted movie, but it is not. It is really hard to watch. Yeah. So it is really hard to watch. I'm not necessarily drawn uh, to a hard Animal watch. murder, brother on brother rape. <laughs> Done. Um, I'm out. I'm out. Whoa. Yeah. I'm out. So, I mean, if you're down for that, go ahead and watch I'm, it. I'm, I'm out. Not say no to. <laughs> I I'm not gonna say no to ju- like just because that if it if it's yeah. good if it if it services the story it is but it's it does but it's so long and drawn out and no nope. so oh, long and, and drawn out shot, but, uh, and he's shot so raw and visceral that like shit. I wish I could have never I would if I could right. delete a movie from my memory it would be that movie like don't watch right. this like it's a it's well crafted that guy turns in a great performance as John Bunting but like when I saw him pop up in this I'm like oh so Australia has like five actors to choose from that was my Basically. thought like, yeah. like it's like how the BBC has like 20 actors you know mm-hmm. Australia has like five and like five of them were in a Super Bowl commercial this it, year yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. The famous, okay. the mm. very famous ones. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, so, Oof. yeah. Don't I watch didn't sometimes. begrudge him in this movie for turning around and like heading out the door like, because oh, I guess you know it's like what you know. What choice did he have? You know. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you were more invested, you know, it's like then that becomes like a you know. Well, do I see see, see this through or? You know, at this point, it's just, you know, these people getting to know each other. It's just like, Mm -hmm. you seem like you need some time. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Which I think is where the movie ultimately goes, right? It's like, they can come out from this uh, situation. I like that scene where they're sitting with the DCFS equivalent. And then she has come to accept the child's, it feels like the child's quirks at that point. Mm Mm-hmm. How he how he acts and it's like well he speaks his mind mm-hmm. and then she's all up for his it, it, it's all about it feels like it's all about he does these things we have to focus them so and it feels like they have she's focused his uh, his love of shooting the 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 dart gun it feels like uh, to an actual target and everything yeah it feels like and you know there's a she's getting his quirks into a specific area so mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. That are more, I guess, you know. Yeah. Instead of making dart guns and weapons, and you're actually just going to throw darts right. and you're going to garden feels, and do magic yeah. tricks. Yeah, it feels like there's a place for them, and I think they're. Yeah. It seems like they're finding the place for these things, mm-hmm. and, it, and that feels like a progress for them. And she's like, she's not telling him to stop every five seconds. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which. Yeah. Whew, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> whew, all right. Has anyone here seen the Lars von Trier film Dogville? Yeah. No. Wait, is that the first one or the second one? It is. The I first feel like Mandalay if I'm going to venture into Lars von Trier, it's just going to be a fucking. You've already seen heavy, one. Heavy, some heavy. Oh, shit. You've already yeah. seen one. Ugh. Um, but well, Jennifer Kent was his PA on that movie, oh. so that's where she oh, got feels, a lot of onset training. That feels right. Um, that movie is an especially weird one to be on set for, but because there's, fantas- really, there's not really a well, set. Yeah, there's yeah. no set. <laughs> there's no set. It's, there's just, tape on the ground. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's like it takes place in what the 1800s yeah. in America. Oh. Yep. Nicole Kidman's in it. And the set. This is Paul Bettany. Yeah. It's a I big room with, it's with dark. tape on the floor, like a play almost. Yeah. And mm. like this is the. Like that's it. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But that's the, that's the set. Yeah. Ooh. So I mean, it's it interesting. interesting. Yeah. Well, everything yeah. Lars von Trier does. Right. Is interesting. Interesting. right. Describe a Lars von Trier <laughs> yeah. movie. Oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. 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 But to right. watch it is like one of the most soul crushing <laughs> yeah. experiences yeah. you're like, ever like going to Like all of through. his movies. Yeah. yeah. Basically. Yeah. 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 Every single one of them. Yeah. Melancholia. 
Yeah. Oh my god, Melancholia, like, I was, like, in a fetal position for two days, dude. That movie fucks you up. But yeah. there's some parallels between that and this movie. Yes. You know? Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, I can, I see the Von Trier influence in her work. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But it's interesting that she was a PA on Dogville, of all things. Something with no set, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, maybe yeah. that influence has elevated her uh, above being just general genre fair as far as the horror movie. Because this is all in the house for the most part. But even part. some of her influences, you can see. I'm assuming that you know because uh, the the way that she works the Babadook into the movie, uh, the TV screens mm-hmm. through like the yeah. George Millier, like the you know, yeah the old yeah, silent the moon, yeah and all that mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean because yeah. he appears in those old. Uh, I'm assuming that they just like pho- not photoshopped, but I think it's quick enough where they, they did because the those are the real movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. those are original movies. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you can do any effects work that gets you that look that well. Yeah, so right. I'm pretty sure, but it's quick enough where I think they could just pop mm-hmm. them up real quick and then mm-hmm. move on. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And well, she also well. uses uh, Mario Bava's Black Sabbath, which yep. we covered on, yeah, on the Sabbath. show. Yeah, Black Sabbath. I was very surprised to see that. I was <laughs> that like, was oh, funny. cool. She actually, Jennifer Gent's really well versed in her horror history. She knows a lot. Like, um, and she also said that like the design of the Babadook itself was based on um, the lost Lon Chaney film London After Midnight. Like, oh, some stills from that movie. She based okay, the look yeah. of the Babadook. As soon as you say that, so, it's like, yep, okay, yep, I see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Top so hat she is, and she's really well versed. I mean, obviously, like when she they asked her influences, she listed like twenty films we all love. You know, mm-hmm. it was like mm-hmm. Halloween and all these classic horror Let's movies that we all love. More times, Jennifer but, Kent. Yeah, she, Jennifer she, Kent, she, so she knows. This. She knows a lot. So Good. She knows where she's coming from, and mm-hmm. those are all pur- purposeful choices, I'm sure. So. Mm-hmm. Good. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, should we? Uh, we are eventually going to go around the room and uh, mm-hmm. diagnose so. final di- uh, personal diagnosis. The, the final diagnosis. <laughs> the thera- oh, no, we, don't want, we don't want personal diagnosis yeah. off of this no. movie. We'll <laughs> cry. Put our feet we'll up on all the couch. cry. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to do that, but first we're going to go to mailbag. But uh, you guys got anything uh, that you want to say? Pre wrap up on the Babadook. Before I uh, I watched the make so like the the book in this movie the actual the Mr. Babadook. Yeah, some making book. of in this movie. Um, well, it's pretty great, but like there's a whole making of just for the book because I I mean I'm a designer, so I'm a nerd. Yeah. So I sure, do, yeah. I dove real deep into the, like the making of the nerd. book. They were they sell those. I think you can actually. There buy was it. a there was a campaign that yeah. like you could like purchase them i was gonna do it but it was like 90 dollars for the Ooh, book and i was like i can't lot. afford that but there was only like eight thousand of them made so they're pretty herself. they were all handmade yeah so, well i imagine they would be he's like yeah. a new york uh artist alex jahaz okay. yeah he's uh he's a designer um he focuses in paper craft if you've ever seen um the title sequence or seen the show the united states of Terra, mm-hmm. he did the title sequences for that you know it's like the pop-up paper yeah. craft and so that was like his first big thing he did and then for this movie they flew him out to australia and he was like well he's like you know i can do this but i'm not like like, cause she wanted to do all this crazy, like pop up stuff. And like, he's like, well, I'm not like a, like animator or an engineer. Like I can only do illustrations on paper. And she was like, well, just do what you think is best. You know? And she gave him the script and he like basically did the, like the interactions that you see in the, in the movie basically did that in the book. And like in the making of video, he like opens this drawer in his desk and he has the three like hero books that were used on screen. And like, He's talking about how he made them and he hand painted each one of them. Mm. So like that scene where she rips it up, I'm like, <laughs> Oh my no, no, god, stop. <laughs> I was just yeah. like, oh no. <laughs> I'm just like, you spent all this time painting this and you just no. like rip it up. Um but he was just talking, yeah, he th- a lot of love went into those books. And yeah. like I know it, it looks was, like it. I know it was like a two year wait for like the books that were purchased through the campaign, but like it's worth it mm. when you see the the craft quality of them. Yeah, that guy was really good at paper craft. Check out United States of Terror if you haven't. The title sequence is incredible for it. It's mm-hmm. it's it is this times twenty. You know, it's layers on layers of paper craft. So it's great. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, all right. Let's uh, summon our mailman Igor. We'll get some of your mail. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. I right, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Let's. Uh, oh, sorry. Nope. He's got a tap hat on today. Oh. He likes to be dancing, and he always makes creepy noises. So he should yeah, put he his does. like long gloves on, though. You know. <laughs> no. Do those? Are <laughs> those sharp? Look. Were you saying those are? Ah, they, they, look, like pointy. they look sharp. Pointy, we don't know. You know? They, they were made, never used in a sharp way. They made way. like a like a noise when he like clicked yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And and were, when he moved him out, he went. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think they're like claws. I don't know. You wouldn't want to get stuck with one of them. No, probably yeah. not. Yeah. Well, let's remind people Ooh. again how they can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. And tonight. Mailbag. Mailbag. Sure Sounds very full. Up. There you Mail go. time. <laughs> About the Babadook. Jill Calvania writes in. Ooh. And she says, Babadook is a darn good representation of depression and grief. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. it is. Uh, Nick Hammond writes in and says, this was a pretty fun, creepy movie. The ending was really meh for me, but there was a fun ride, especially with the surround sound turned up loud. Yeah, I'm glad Sean, this is Sean's first time watching this movie. I'm it glad was. you got to experience it in this kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, this seems like the best way to experience yeah. it. I can't imagine sitting at home and you you're don't have 5. this one. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have this set up at home? Oh, I think you're missing out we, on some yeah. stuff. Because of that rumble at the end? Holy shit. I was uh, like I living in a fucking... <laughs> when, it, it in the when it came yeah. out, we did not get it in theaters around here, so I watched it on VOD at home in my house. Uh, Just like regular TV. No, watching. you need yeah, a... Exactly. Set, yeah. need, I watched it on Netflix. The yeah, sound yeah. is so important. The sound is... Sound is very important to any movie, but like they accentuate it in this movie, and it's yeah. very important to this. So you, you're gonna see this, see it with a little extra oomph behind it. And turn it up to eleven. Yeah, sort of D box that shows yeah. the <laughs> fucking Babadook because there needs to be. Well, that has one of the loudest like subwoofer, yeah. whatever the hell that was doing. I'm like, is my subwoofer supposed to be doing that? Uh, I, there uh, was a moment I was just like, Jesus, it's, it's gonna, gonna hurt something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Joey Adams writes in and says, I love this movie. Very creepy in parts. Nothing about it is very predictable, and I need to give it another watch. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, sure. no, uh, Holly and I were just talking about how the first time we watched it was when it first came out, and yep. this is our, like yeah, this you, is the second it, time we've seen it since 2014, so definitely give it a rewatch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lisa Paget says, I love, love, love this movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chris Huddleston writes in and says, I like the movie overall, but it brings up my biggest pet peeve in horror over the last 20 years or so, oh, no. the it's all in his or her head twist. It's to the point now that I watch trailers and assume that there won't be a literal monster or protagonist who's been running from a killer the entire movie actually turns out to be the killer. Why do you think filmmakers are using this trope so often? Am I totally off base? And in fairness, the Babadook was much subtler about it than a lot of other movies have been. Yeah, I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't put the Babadook in that same category necessarily. Yeah. I don't think it's the same concept. I, I get is. the point he's trying to make. I do. I, I, do. I understand. Yeah, yeah, we understand the point. And I think you can... The, the great thing about this movie is that you can go either way with it. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. But that infuriates people. I mean, that's the thing. I, I mean, again. Yeah. That's you their call problem. It the Babadook, <laughs> and you has a monster on the. And I guess the way that the trailer also, you know, like when you watch that trailer, it's like, this is going to be a scary monster movie. It's a marketing problem. Yep. Yeah. It's not yeah, a that's movie not problem. It's a marketing problem. problem. Yeah. yeah. No, like you. And, and no one. <laughs> You know, has no, yeah. no they have no say, say in that. They have trailers. no say in That's that. That's a different yeah. company. That I don't even know how you would market it to people so they'd want to see it without doing it that way. I don't think you necessarily can. Yeah, I mean, I get. I like. I definitely agree with that. I raise you. I, uh, Chuds, we talked about this, but uh, I raise you the worst um, infraction of. The man searching for someone who murdered someone turns out he murdered them the whole time. That I think is a a movie now. No, I'm not. No, (laughs) but that trope is a worse trope than the trope he mentioned. I think. Like, I think Mm -hmm. the whole like man searching for a murderer turns out he murdered them the whole time. Mm -hmm. Especially in the Mm -hmm. early 2000s, that was every fucking movie. Didn't High Tension do that? Spoiler. Uh, High Tension did it in a worse way, even than we had just discussed. Well, High Tension... Only because theirs doesn't make any damn it sense. It makes no sense. Yeah. Um, I watched it the one time. I will say I will say there are... I won't mention them, but there, are, there is a De Niro movie that does this. Yep. There is a Daniel oh, Craig yeah, yeah, movie yeah. that does this. Yep. Um, there's a lot of big name stars that are in movies that there's have done this. There's a John Cusack movie yep. that does it. Yeah. Yep. 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 There is a DiCaprio movie. That I like that this. one. Uh, I like that one. So, yeah. so <laughs> right, but, It's got very bombastic uh, score to that movie. I but there's a bunch of... Early two thousand, early to mid two thousands movies where this happens that a lot. Was a thing, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the question being why, and I wonder if it's just because it's a, like it's we a cash grab. To, I don't. They, well, well, we no, I think be, they want to. They want to express an idea, but I think they don't. They can't do it as smartly as movies like this. Well, do. we mm-hmm. used to be more comfortable with externalizing our monsters. You used to, but at some point, you know, this stuff became silly, right? Mm-hmm. In some way, yeah. And so nobody. Nobody's afraid of monsters anymore. Like they, yeah. would, audiences would just turn away from it, going like, "I'm not scared of it" because I don't believe that it's true. Because we've had 
I guess, you know, like the there's a more uh, deeper understanding, I think, in just the general populace of psychology. Yes. You know, as we go on, it's like, well, monsters are fairy tales and they just represent blah, blah, blah. So you can't actually have Rawhead Rex anymore standing for Thank something. You, dear you know, Lord. a guy in a big rubber suit. Now it's like you have to do the psychological. Yeah, the you know, scariest we monsters, are the, monster. the one in yeah. your head. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You are the monster, Colin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wish they'd bring back the monsters too. Yeah. Hey, I think that. there's room yeah. for both of them, Colin. I think so too. I want both as well. Yeah. I, I think the Babadook is well written and well crafted enough that it kind of evades that, that trope. But I, I get what he's saying that like yeah, that. Sure, yeah. yeah. And, and I will say the trailers are cut in a way now that you can almost see those movies coming. Like mm-hmm. the like trailers oh, are cut yeah. now that like you see them and you're like, oh, it's going to be so and so did it the whole time yeah, or mm-hmm. it's going to be like yeah. it's in their head the whole they, time. Yeah, like they, I just saw yeah. something like three weeks ago that yeah. I called it. Like what, It was yeah. like five minutes into the movie. I'm like, boom, no yeah. the ending. And they sure dumb enough. it down and it's so frustrating. Like movies like this, people get angry about it and it's like, fuck you. T- watch a movie that makes you think. Why is yeah. that? Why are you so angry mm-hmm. that like it could go either way? Mm-hmm. It's okay to think about things. Mm-hmm. Well, and you know, I mean, the Baba Duke is in this movie. Yeah. We see him, he shows up. Granted, he's not in it a lot, but he is in it. Yeah. It's not like other movies where, you know, they'll say something shows up at a certain point and it never does. Right. Yeah. Looking at you, it comes at night. I know you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I know what you're talking about. The title literally says, This you know is what, what it, this we, is it, what it came, is, and it, it comes. just came to the characters, yeah. okay? Yeah. It uh, came to them psychologically. Uh, yeah. You, you can't make a statement like that in the title of your movie and then never yeah. have it happen. Misnomer. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Nick Siebel writes in and says, Every year there's a movie that claims to be the scariest movie <laughs> since blank, blank, blank. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of hype around this film. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on the upcoming A24's Hereditary? A lot of mm-hmm. hype coming out of Sundance. Bill, is the scariest movie since The Exorcist. Oh, my God. Well, well first of all, I'm like, why is it always you go back to The Exorcist? Was that the only scary movie that's ever been made? It's ever. the scariest movie since. Ever. Wouldn't it be the scariest movie since, you know, Sinister the Conjuring? The ring. I don't think those genuinely scare people. Like, I, I guess, I guess the Exorcist was probably a cultural phenomenon in the way that, like, mm-hmm. I, I think maybe it's contemporary would be Paranormal Activity, the first one, because that one did like he, that one did I just, secure, very I, well. Yeah, I just, I, I just think it's, it people. was scary. It well, was, it was. Well, I just think it's odd nowhere. though because but I feel like for so long they were saying like scarier than the Blair Witch, and then all of a sudden they just started bypassing. They went back to the Exorcist. Yeah, yeah. It, it was yeah. Blair Witch yeah. for a while, yeah. and then all of a sudden That's it's true. It it's back to Exorcist. Yeah. yeah. Right? I, I no. Yeah. We, yeah. we have this conversation. But then when the kids go see The Exorcist, they're like, "That's not scary at all." Because right. everybody says everybody says it's the scariest movie ever. Yeah. The you same with The people, Shining. They you show don't like people The Shining this shit, now. Yeah, I show people uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and they're just like, eh. What? And I'm just like, <laughs> <sighs> You don't need these people in your life, Sean. I don't understand <laughs> yeah. why this doesn't bother yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. What was it's, his question? I had a point, and I forgot what his question it's was. It's all perspective, but like we yeah. have this conversation probably every week off mic. <laughs> Mostly, We yeah. really do. We, Most of the time. I'm not going to lie. We drag A24 a lot off mic for, for their marketing. For their marketing. For their marketing. For their marketing. marketing. Yeah. Now, a lot of their possibly, movies. A lot I of love marketing. their movies. I love their movies. Yeah, it's not their all movies. The marketing. It's their marketing, but their, their marketing employs- Oh, hereditary. That's what he was asking. Yeah, yeah, their marketing employs such hyperbole that- like. Like I, okay, I, personally, I'm on two strikes for A24. I really hope Hereditary is not the third, yeah. but I feel like it's probably going to be. You I've, know, I've purposely like avoided everything about it. I'm like, I don't want to know anything because yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah I don't want to know anything. Ma- mitigating it your ex- I didn't watch managing your expectations. That came out. Yeah, yeah, I didn't watch yeah, anything. Yeah, same same here, I haven't like, seen I'm not it. Just, I know I'm going to go see it. I'm not watching. I don't want to know anything. So to answer your question, we have no idea because we're all avoiding. Yeah, we're all avoiding Hereditary. That's what I think. That's. I but think I that's read, where we're at. I read the bloody disgusting article that was Managing saying, expectations. Yeah, it was like yes, yeah. I did too. It was like the day after everybody's like, hereditary yeah. is the scariest thing since yes. the Exorcist, and that a writer who I don't know who it is, it was, came out, probably was either like, Brad Miska or Johnny Squires. Yeah, it's like every year we do this, folks, and he was the one who was laying out the like. Yeah, you know, it's a good it's article. It's a really good article. Yeah, yeah. these guys are right. sitting in these film festivals and they're basically watching the same movie tropes over and over and over and over again. Right. F- you know, whatever, five movies a day mm-hmm. or more. Yeah. And then when they see something that is not that, they like go, "Oh my god, this is fantastic!" Right. Mm-hmm. Well, it goes back to what I said earlier that the Baba Duke was the for the first car in this hype train. Mm-hmm. Hereditary is just the latest car in this hype train. So, yeah. like, I'm trying to really get off this fucking train yeah, and well, not exactly well, be yeah. disappointed. Well, every year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's one every year, you know? So, yeah, uh, I'm just trying to, yeah. I think we're yeah. all just trying to be like, all right, we realize that now. So, we're just like, 
I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. I'm not going to watch yes. it. I'm not going to pay attention. <laughs> be like, all right, it's getting reviews. Yep. That's fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything. Yeah. I'll watch it. It would all be out. better yeah. if we yeah. all just torched our social media accounts. Probably. And, yeah. I mean, we like, probably Because that's the be thing. Better. Even though we're saying, yeah. like, well, we're not going to watch any trailers. You're going to hear. Yeah. You cannot stop hearing people. It's all people, my feed. Because you yeah. would just yeah. see yeah. the title being met. I mean, the fact that we yeah. know about Hereditary to yeah. begin with. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> but like, yeah. No, but, but like, exactly like you said, like, I've been avoid. I haven't really been on Facebook much for that reason. Like, I'm tired of being bombarded with these things. Like, I want to be surprised. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even look at this shit I anymore. want more of, like, a split or, like, a, like, honestly, a Blumhouse in general approach of where I don't know anything about it until a month before it comes out. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, Split was a... Uh, was a pleasant surprise. Get out. I mean, mm-hmm. get out had a little bit more of a hype train. Yeah, but, get out. I had still, heard more about, but, but split like, was a lovely split surprise. Was like a January drop, and it was a pleasant surprise. You mm-hmm. know, I need more of that. Yeah. I just have to police myself and ignore things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 You exactly. Build, biggest thing. You got to build willpower. Yes, yeah, I have to have the willpower yeah. because I'm the one who's sort of like, uh, all right, I'll read this article. Fine. Yep. I have to. I know. Decide. I used to be like that, but yeah. I cracked it several yeah. years I ago, I've, and now I, I can I just like, crack. Yeah, I don't need to see that. I don't yes. need to read it. Uh, about Ooh. Kathy's curse, C. Huds writes in about oh, Kathy's no. curse. Shuds. And says, uh, I was about halfway through your episode thinking I'd make a great comment about this being the Winchester House of Movies, building things that go nowhere. (laughs) Then Michaela said the same thing in her wrap-up. Oh, there it is. That just means we have a telepathic connection, man. I think so. So, I'll give you credit for that one. That's right. Thanks for being a part of the Freak Show family. You put it in my brain. See, good. All right, so I guess that brings you to the moment that you've all been waiting for, because we don't know how this is going to go. Well, I mean, we do with this one, right? With this this one, I think we do. Oh, I could be traumatized, Colin. There could be a wild card. That's right. Oh, shit. Well, now I want to know. Is Sean going to be like the... I fucking hated this movie. Yeah. You never know. Look at him. He's sitting over there going like, he doesn't even know. I don't. I'm. I mean, sometimes I don't know until it gets <laughs> to me. There's a lot Colin. of shrugging happening right now. I have right no now. idea. That's yeah. true. That's happened to me. Like I'll think one thing, and then by the time it gets to me, it's like you know what? No, fuck this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, that means I got to be persuasive because uh, I'm coming up first. I guess so, Colin. <laughs> what did you think about the Babadook? The well, Babadook. Uh, Duke. I, I Babadook. Can't say it right. I can't. Babadook. It's I have Babadook. had. I've gone on a journey with this movie. I think this is at least the third, possibly the fourth time that I've seen this. So the first time I saw it, I got to tell you, I was kind of caught up in the uh, marketing blitz for the movie. It's the greatest, you know, scariest thing. And then you watch it and you're like, well, you know, I've seen things that are done better and I've seen things. That are, it's, it's pretty good. It's all right. You know, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of under your breath. Yeah. Yeah. Because I guess that's, a th- you know, it's like I don't. This was Jennifer Kent's first movie, I think. Right? Full length. First full length full, movie. Full, yeah. First full length movie. And first written, and there are moments, um, because I think maybe it's just t- part of, and parcel with this type of movie where you're trying to do this, uh, you know, to present this um, uh, nearly schizophrenic <clears throat> state of mind. <clears throat> Pardon me. You're trying to impart this on the audience, right? You want to get the audience to feel what your main character's feeling. Yeah. So it just seems like sometimes there are scenes that, I mean, as you're watching them, you're like, I mean, I don't know where the movie's going from here. I know that this has to happen, this has to happen, and this has to happen to to bring resolution. But this scene is like, where are we wandering with this, and what's really happening, and what you know, and you're kind of questioning the the reality of it. And I don't think, I think again, I think this may be because she's a first time filmmaker, and I think she does the the. The flip side of that is that the emotional core of this movie is so fucking strong. The the the, the subject itself uh, hits you, uh, you know, so strongly that it outweighs the shortcomings. So it's like then you know it elevates the movie, you know, over that. Um, <clears throat> well, I keep thinking back to like, I mean, I guess. This is a title that it feels like, at least right now when we're talking about it, it's like we, it feels like it is wrapped around this whole idea of internet hype, right? Because you'll hear people talking about like how, you know, they lump the Babadook and these other Sundance movies in with like, you know, the, that I expected, you know, they were supposed to be these awesome horror movies, but they're not, you know, um, like Nightmare on Elm Street, or they're not as awesome as uh, Friday the 13th, or they're not as awesome, or, you know, whatever the hell, right? These true horror fans. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but I think a lot of that, you know, or, you know, more modern, you know, the conjuring films or whatever, but I, I think that there is a horror to this movie and it's terrifying in a way that's a very adult. Mm hmm. Okay. It's a good so, way of describing it. Yeah. Because I think that's maybe a lot of the, you know, like adult horror. Yeah. Beca oh. Because I think, you, <laughs> here. but I think you have to have a certain life experience, right? Yeah. To have an, that will heighten your because when, once you have, but once you have this life experience or you, at least you can have empathy for this experience, mm -hmm. then what ha is happening in the film becomes horrifying yes. because, you know, it's like, how in the hell would you yes. deal with this? Or like, you, you know, you feel sympathy for this person who is dealing with this. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, this is just, you know, bad from seven different directions all at once. And I don't know that the younger uh, viewer, and if you're listening, you can absolutely correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know what, if you haven't had that, you know, if you can't empathize in the same way, mm -hmm. and you are, again, going into it with this expectation that, you know, it's going to be a roller coaster ride, it's going to be fun, and there's going to be this monster creeping around and jumping out and doing all this stuff, <clears throat> that you're met with this colossal disappointment, and then you get on, you know, the Are you thinking, and, like, age range, like... 20s and above or like teenagers and above. I can't imagine a 19 year old like identifying yeah. with this movie. I really can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I used to think so. And this is the thing. When I, mean, I was 19, I, I watched, I watched films. No, I agree with you. Yeah. But I've noticed, you know, there's movies that even though I liked them when I was younger, when I watch them now that I'm older, like, you know, some movies like Unforgiven was one that like, I mean, I saw that when it came out in 92 mm -hmm. and I liked it. And I thought, like, yeah, this is a really good movie. And I've seen it since. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is, like, one of the greatest films ever made. You, know, because you have a different just, appreciation. It, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it talked yeah. to me in a different way. That, yeah. like, now you I'm changed, closer. Not the movie. Yeah. yeah. I'm closer to the the age of the guy who made the movie. Yeah. As right. we, you know, we yeah. go on. And so your perspective on life all, you know, changes. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's the same thing that's going on yeah, here. Yeah, because if you're, like, 19, you're not old enough to be the mom, but you're not young enough to be the kid. So you're, like, in this weird middle ground. Yeah, I, I can mm -hmm. see that. I mean, sure. there's also a thing right here. It's just, like, I have a kid. None of you have kids. Kids. Right. Like there's that. Uh, yeah. Not to say that it's uh, uh, better, but it's different. It's, it's a different perspective. It's a, yeah. it's a different experience. Yeah. yeah. Perspective like we have, of what's we have going an, on. We have a general understanding, but we don't sure. have an emotional connection like you do. Yeah. 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 We just have what the you know the filmmakers mm -hmm. able to put across, and I think it's very strong that way. And I think <clears throat> it is. Uh, I mean, it's a. I think it's a horror movie. Uh, you know. I mean, you hear people say, "Well, it's not like it's not." It's not like um, reveling in the the tropes of like the the more enter, you know entertaining horror films or the sillier ones. It's like it's actually after something very specific. Uh, a comment about human, the human animal, human nature, you mm -hmm. know, and and, and the, the dynamic between like you know uh, parents and children, and you know. It's not, this isn't like a good, uh, well, I guess it is ultimately a hopeful story, but you have to suffer, you know, going through this. <laughs> just get to get, yeah, and to that's get to that what's horror, you know, that is the horrifying thing about it. And the monster is like, you know, pff, it, it almost doesn't matter at all. Well, I mean, the almost. figure, the figurative, the literal monster, the figurative, mo you know, thing is, you know, the mother herself mm -hmm. or the behavior, the psychology of these people. But in the this representation house, That's of the is, Babadook, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think if you see it on those levels, then you're going to see it from, like, you know, William Friedkin going, like, this is the greatest movie since Rosemary's Baby. <clears throat> I don't necessarily think it's that. You know, I mean, I have a different taste, you know, in, in things. But I like this movie, especially on this viewing. Um, I think I appreciated that the most that I've, uh, um, of the times that I've watched it. I would definitely recommend The Babadook. I mean, I think it is going to go down as a classic of the genre. I mean, that's what I'm thinking, mm -hmm. predicting right now. Everybody's mm -hmm. already done that al already, so this is not like a uh, you know dangerous <laughs> position to take. <laughs> this is mm -hmm. so safe, Colin. <laughs> We're being safe. It's very safe. So there you go. Holly, what did you think of The Babadook? Um, yeah, I, I, th I think this movie is so beautifully made. It, it's The writing is something else. It's It, it goes to this, this world of mental health and instability that is so truly terrifying and it's so completely relatable. Like we, you know, we watch so many horror movies that have these characters and these situations that, you know, they are paranormal. They are, you know, just real monsters. And that's, I mean, that's, that's great, but there's just something so truly gets to like the center of you 
when it's something psychological like that because it's something that we all struggle we all struggle with these monsters that we have inside that we've that we don't know how to deal with or maybe they're just unexpected and this movie just oh it captures that in such a beautiful way it's just so Oh, it, it's it's overwhelming, I think. Um, like I said, the first time I watched this, it was truly scary to me. And th- I told Michaela earlier, I was like, it surprises me when a movie can scare me. Because I can appreciate a movie. I can, you know, maybe maybe a jump scare might, be, might take me back a little bit or take me back a little bit. But when a movie truly scares me, like that's surprising to me. To me, that is an impressive movie. And this movie scared me the first time, truly scared me. Like I told you guys, the first time I watched it, I literally had to like pause it, and I'm like, okay, I need I need a little bit. I'm gonna come back to this tomorrow because I just need some time. <laughs> this movie like truly scared me, and that just doesn't happen. And I was just I'm so in awe of that fact. It's it's just such it's such a different movie. It comes from this completely different place than I've seen before. Um, we can compare it to to countless other things, but. It really felt new to me. It felt like this this honest movie. It felt really honest just from what it was dealing with. And I really appreciate that, especially in a horror movie. On, like an honest, true depiction like that is so rare in horror. It's just, oh, it was it was refreshing. It, was, it, it takes the breath out of you and it's a breath of fresh air in a weird way. Um, I absolutely love this movie. Uh, second time around, it really got me in an emotional way that it didn't before. Um, I feel like every time you watch it, you might get something different from it. Like Colin said, each uh, this is his fourth time, but he still saw it in a new way, um, which to me just reflects really great filmmaking. That's a beautiful thing, especially in a horror movie. I love the direction horror movies are going. It, it's it's really it's a cool time for horror, and this movie is a great representation. I, I like I said earlier, I had so, I had some issues with the ending. But with me, that's just nitpicking. Like, I'm not even... I don't even care that much. It's just... It's a solid story. It's it's scary. It's emotional. It's really well shot. Yeah. I definitely recommend The Babadook. It's awesome. Sean? Holly, I think you said it very well. Thank you. And I agree with a lot of what you said. Um, horror has the ability to take certain ideas, topics, what have you, and... Um, illustrate them in a way that uh, maybe other quote-unquote mainstream genres don't have the ability to do um but uh, horror does and uh this movie ah i don't know uh, jennifer ken i'll say her name again yes say that name she mm-hmm. written and directed by her i think she very astutely is able to express this idea that she has a about uh, it's 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 about loss it's about depression it's about a lot of things and that she's able to uh, uh, identify these things and then create a uh, a horror uh, I use the word icon not, not in a you know not in a way that um, uh, uh, because I I, I I'm I lack any other word to describe it but something that represent a representation of of these ideas and these feelings um that she's able to put in this movie and mm-hmm. i think it's uh it's 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 done so very well um it's a movie that i identified with um a lot um mm-hmm. if, if, in and with just with the interaction with a mother and her son and the difficulties that they go with uh, that they go through um, and the difficulties the mother go through goes through by herself um, and also just like uh, aside from the like the subtext of it like just getting down to it being a horror movie just like there's some fucking creepy shit in this movie yeah. like when the Babadook shows up and just his like bah, bah, and just that <laughs> Because yeah. they associate that with the the sound design of this movie, and they bring it out, and it's just louder than everything else, and it fucking creeped me out. Like, mm-hmm. I want to go back and watch this movie and watch those parts where you hear that, because it, it's, it's it's creepy, and it's scary to me, and I like what they did with that. Um, they're dealing with uh, issues in this movie, and I think the, the allegory that that they're doing is just... Um, I think they executed very well. Um, uh, you know, I go with like, that's just, it's something that lives with you and you have to, you have to keep it somewhere. You have to deal with it. You have to acknowledge it and you have to 
kind of you have to soothe it like it's something that will always be with you and i think like the um how she represents that in this movie is like I haven't seen that necessarily. Mm-hmm. The physical representation of that, I haven't seen that. That is something that will always be with you, and you have to deal with. And um, and the fact that she does it in this in a horror movie, just uh, I, uh, I I like it very much, and I think she did an excellent job. Mm-hmm. Um, I, repre- uh, I represent. Uh, I recommend. We all represent. We all yeah. represent. <laughs> I think we all represent. I recommend the Babadook. Uh, very much. I think she did uh, uh, an exceptional job with this movie. Um, mm-hmm. I really liked it. Um, yeah, I, I definitely recommend it. Michaela, we we didn't mention earlier that the Babadook's now a gay icon. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I about that. <laughs> Thanks, I Netflix. About that. Gay icon, yeah. and the Babadook. Oh, yeah. I looked that up actually. <laughs> that wasn't because of Netflix. There was some some guy on Reddit just that came out and like the Babadook's gay. And like all these uh, yeah. indignant horror fans were like, well, what are you talking about? So and then basically everyone, was trolling yeah. them. And then somebody posted like a fake shot of Netflix's LG, LGBT section. Which with is the not Boba hard Duck. to Photoshop right. at all. No, yeah. And then no. that, yeah. that became like an internet oh, meme. Wow. And then gotcha. I think it. Uh, the there was power like, of Reddit. <laughs> wasn't there like a, there was like a gay pride parade or something where people were actually. Yes. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Went oh, yeah he's, huge. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah he, it was he has been adopted. And especially if it was just to fuck with people and like yeah, yeah. and it's now been on Deal like fucking like RuPaul's Drag Race and shit like yeah. it's oh, yeah. I love like, it. it's like a thing now <laughs> yeah oh it's wonderful so the thing about this movie that makes it so different from other horror movies is that everyone that is alive at the beginning is alive at the end except for the dog God um, damn like, it. <laughs> I mean, but, but there's oh. no final girl. There's no like group of people that are getting murdered and like, you know, mm-hmm. like there that does not happen in this movie. And this movie is, you know, really, you know, we've talked about it a bunch about its allegory for grief and mental illness and being a parent and like all these emotions that come with that. But this movie is not about the things that will kill you. It's about the things you have to learn to live with, which is yeah. a really horrifying thing. It's scary. And is like something other horror movies don't really even try to touch on. Um, and that's what really sets it apart. Like the idea that like you, you cannot get they set that up from the beginning. You cannot get rid of this. You have to learn. And like the book doesn't tell you how to manage it. It doesn't tell you how to deal with this shit. It just says, hey, guess what? This thing's here to stay. Right. Like, deal. Like, like a deal. Like a child. Yeah. Like a child. It doesn't yeah. say you're going to wish you were dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, isn't yeah. that the. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Which yeah. isn't that what grief and that's, that's, I imagine yeah. sometimes being a parent feels like. Grief, depression, like, being yeah, a parent. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh. yeah. 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 This movie, um, hard feelings. Um, I'm starting to be a little concerned for Jennifer Kent. <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> well, yeah. Where does that come from? I guess. <laughs> well, she said it's not from her own experience. I, as a parent, she said that she had a friend that was a single mom mm. that like had all these feelings she didn't feel comfortable expressing because, like, as a mom, let alone a single mom, you're supposed to just like love it, love being a parent, yeah. love your kid. Yeah. You, you wow. cannot express like feelings of doubt or. Any any sort mm-hmm. of negative feeling you cannot express. Yeah. You I don't. All I don't. I, f- I find that uh, any representation of of I, I find false as to not yeah. have negative feelings toward your child. Right. I, 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 but is it socially acceptable to? That, I don't. Yeah, that's I don't, what the point. Yeah. Right, yeah. It's make, not, yeah. The Babadook is all the things you're, you're not allowed you're, to your talk child about. Is yeah. Everything. Yeah. That's what you live for. Have you guys yeah. ever seen a movie called the, We Have to Talk About Kevin? Yes, yes, that movie uh, shook me to my I core. Want to. Uh, Ezra I Miller turns in a great performance that nobody saw. It's Ezra Miller. Yeah. It's yes. also uh, uh, Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I forgot it was Ezra Miller. Yeah, Ooh, but I know I want to watch that even. They're more. not a, like plot lo- similar, but I mean the idea that the like the, the, the that, that you should mother, love your child no matter yeah. what, and you yeah. cannot have doubts, and you cannot second guess yeah. anything. That's yeah, that is but what much... happens when your child doesn't think monstrous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's a it's a good one. Your child. You know, there's many children in the world. Your child may uh, grow up to be a very ho- horrible human being. That's why I'll never have any. I mean, that's not. Don't want. Don't want to roll that yeah. dice. <laughs> Maybe don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, th- I love that this movie touches on the fact that like it's not just like a conjuring or like uh, uh, you know, the Warrens can come in and do whatever their magic and it's gone. You know, it's just you have to learn how to live with it. You got to learn how to manage it, even if it's gross and it's dirty, and you you got to keep the secret from your neighbors. That's just what you got to do to live with. It. Mm-hmm. I I this movie I, there was a lot of hype. Uh, it lived up to the hype when I saw it, and I loved it. And I can't wait to see what she does next. I highly recommend oh, yeah. it. Oh yeah, I cannot yeah. wait to see what she do does another next. One. 
Yeah, how come she hasn't done anything? No, wait, she has. She's in post production on something. Yeah. Ooh, all right. <clears throat> but I mean, right. this was an Australian film. Is. She said that when she was making this, she did get a lot of pushback that, like, when she told people she was making a horror film by choice, that they reacted like she was making a porn. They're like, why would you do that? Well, so in Australia, like, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. in Australia, especially, that's because like a said, no no. Yeah, yeah. Well, they have yeah. a lottery, I think, for their film funding and yeah. stuff yeah, like they that. Do. So. And it goes the, to yeah. mostly dramas. Right. And this movie uh, cost around $2 million to make, but she had to raise an extra thirty k through Kickstarter to pay mm. for like a lot of the art production. Mm. So your Kickstarter money went towards that beautiful book and that like de- de- the design of the book and that artist handcrafting that. So I think that you can see every penny of that on the screen in mm-hmm. this movie for sure. And it went toward us talking about this movie today on this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I definitely recommend it. I think yeah. it's great. I think if you haven't seen it yet... You must be an anomaly like, like Sean. <laughs> yeah. You're an anomaly yeah. and you should probably go see it. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's the Babadook. Babadook, Duck, Duck. Uh On the Saturday Night Freak Bob. Show. Thank you for listening. Next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Colin. Colin, what are we watching next week? Oh, shit. I'm curious. Oh, God. I don't even I'm know worried. What's going I'm on. worried. Oh, God. Well, you should be worried because oh, I'm no. actually I'm going down a rabbit hole. The last oh, movie I shit. chose was The Green Slime, and we've been talking about Antonio Margaretti for a while. So we're going to watch one of his anything. movies. We're going to watch Your, The Hunter from the oh, Future. Oh, Your! All right. Hello for Your. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next. Imagine this. Your. Your. It's like a Conan ripoff. Oh, it's man. terrible. Ooh. You'll love it. <laughs> Next week yes. on the Saturday it's Night terrible. Freak Show. It's terrible. You'll love it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's one of those special kind of bads. So uh, that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark.